happy Monday, y'all. You can't go live without fixing your hair, okay? <laughs> Two viewers. See. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to uh I'm trying to do it on my computer so I can see the comments, but yeah, it's freezing up. So, um, I decided, so for the new year, um, you know, y'all know I've been trying to be a little more present in social media. So I decided, um, on Tuesdays at seven, I'll do a segment and it's called Real Tea Tuesdays. And I have my tea here. It's some green tea, so. Um, so the topic I was going to discuss actually was, um, Doing real estate in the middle of a pandemic. That's a pretty big um, topic. So I probably probably try to pick something a little more specific. Um, but let me give it a couple more minutes. And then I will uh, decide what I'm going to talk about. I guess I'm about to see. I don't like having to do this. Oh, I don't have any viewers, but I just saw viewers. Really? See, I ain't got time. Y'all know I ain't good with live. <sighs> Whatever. It said I got five viewers. Anyway, hi viewers, welcome. Oh, hey Lauren. That's my girl. So I have viewers. Hey, Cousin Shayla. So that's two. Sora, Carla, hey. Okay, it's building up. So it's supposed to be like a 30-minute segment. Um, so I'll just... So really what I'm going to cover is um, some of the things people need to um, in order to buy a house. Uh, a lot of the lending criteria has changed um, because of the coronavirus. Although some lenders have, you know, still regular criteria, some have changed. Um, so I'll go over that. And of course, I'll answer any questions people may have. Sorry, I keep looking over because I'm looking at my laptop. Um, I thought it would be easier. I'll have to practice this next time. Hey, Sora and Rakasha. Hey, y'all. So, one more minute and then I'm going to hit it. So a lot of people, um, oh, I still got one minute, one more minute. I say I, I'm going to do it at 7.05 because people say I, um, when I go live, I start too early and I don't stay on long. So I'm just, you know, trying to give the people what they want. Oh gosh, you hear him? Okay, it's 7.05. So the topic I'm going to cover is what's needed um, to buy a house. I get a lot of people who come to me and they feel like they need all this money. Um, I'm taking some notes. They feel like <laughs> Armin, you will be able to get a house. Um, we just have to talk. But anyway, so... 
Um, they feel like they need a lot of money. Um, you don't really need a lot. Um, so I'll go over the different loan types. Um, some things that may be needed uh, for those loan types. And just the process of buying a house. So most people think they have to have a really high credit score. Um, it's nice to have, but I would say at least a 620 for all three of your credit scores will kind of get you somewhere. There are lenders that I know who will lend with a credit score of 500. Um, so, but the lender with the credit score that'll take a 500, that 500 is say you have all this stuff on your credit and your credit score is a 500 and you hit the lottery. So you paid off all the stuff and you're just waiting for the credit report to update. That is a good example where you could use that program because you're, you're waiting for your credit score to update. But you can't use those programs if you have a 500 with all kind of stuff in your credit. My real estate assistant just ran by. I hope he don't come in here. Here he is. Uh, no, we're not ordering pizza. I'm live, so I'll holler at you later. Bye. I'll let you know when I'm done. Okay. So yeah, so the, no, go ask daddy. <laughs> okay, and I'm saying no, so you won't be having pizza tonight. Gosh. Anyway, so with the 500 credit score, um, it's doable. It just depends on what's on your credit. Um, but the lender that I work with, her name, um, actually I have a few lenders just depending on where people's credit are, their personality, um, if they got their stuff together. Um, so I have lenders that I work with. Um, it's a local company called Movement Mortgage, um, Atlantic Bay, um, there in Virginia Beach. And then I use Veterans United. Um, Veterans United, I use them specifically for VA loans. Um, and they do pretty good. But the other lenders with Movement and Atlantic Bay, primarily I use Atlantic Bay because they have several different um, loan programs. Do you want to say hi? You're here now. Come say hi. <laughs> okay, let, let me finish this and I'll come in your room when I'm done. Go ahead. I'll be in there in a minute, okay? Sorry, y'all. I'm a real estate mom. So, yeah. So, the loan types. Um, yeah. So, just try to have a 620. Um, just so, you know, you can have a smooth transition. Um, actually, some lenders have require a 640. But I do know, like I said, I know a lender, you know, they'll do 500, 620. But just try to have your credit squared away. Um, and understand that when you work with realtors, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, Camden, go ahead and go. Give me that. Go ahead. I'll see you in a minute, okay? Sorry, y'all. <laughs> so when you work with, um, when you work with the realtor, there's really not a hookup. Um, you want to think of buying a home as uh, almost like a federal purchase because the federal government backs a lot of the lending programs out there. One moment. Oh, no. Sorry, y'all. Okay, he's gone now. Oh, my gosh. I'll be better prepared next week. But anyway, so yeah. So you want to think of it as a federal purchase. You don't want to um, go in thinking you're going to get the hookup because um, it's really no hookups. You know, you can't, you can't bring fake pay stubs. You can't lie about your income. You can't buy a house of unemployment. Just stuff like that. Just have your stuff together um, and just be ready. Okay, so the different loan types, there's FHA. FHA is a federally backed loan, and with FHA, you put 3.5% down. 
Um, and then there's the VA loan. You don't have to put anything down. But with the FHA, um, no, that's what I was going to tell people. So with the first time home buyer program, a lot of people take advantage of that. Um, but, you know, you don't put anything down. But although you don't put anything down, the price you pay on that to get that first time home buyer, home buyer's loan um, you pay, it's kind of rolled up into your mortgage. So you feel like you're not putting anything down, but you're paying it and spreading it out over the life of the loan. So that's something to think about. First time home buyer, 0% down, sound good, but you usually pay um, mortgage insurance and a higher interest rate. So might as well put the money down and have a lower payment. Um, let's see. So just the common ones, like I said, FHA, VA, um, and then there's conventional loans. Conventional loans. It used to be where you could, you had to put 20% down. Um, now they have a conventional loan out where you don't have to put 3% down. Um, and that's pretty good. And I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not a lender, but I don't think you pay um, mortgage insurance on those loans also. But it's still information that you can use. So, um, so once you get your financing out the way, um, nowadays you can't buy a house. Um, no, not buy a house. You can't see a house really without your pre-approval or proof of funds in hand because houses are going off the market the same day that they came on the market. And if you go and see a house and you want to put an offer you really can't put an offer, like the offer package isn't complete without proof of funds. So that's just something you want to have squared away before you step foot in any house to go look. Because first you want to know how much you're approved for. Um, and you also want to make sure it's within your budget. And like I said, you want to make sure that you have your funding, your funding together to go and see um, say a property. So after you get your funding together and you put in an offer, um, he's back. But anyway, so once you put your offer in, um, and the offer is per like a purchase contract, it's a legally binding contract um, where all parties involved, you know, it's legally binding. So it's not really like you can just back out like, you know, never mind. Um, sometimes that happens and some people just keep it moving. But really, you can be sued for that, uh, for backing out of the contract. And when you put your offer in, there is funding uh, required. It's called an earnest money deposit. Um, and that's due the day that you put your offer in. Um, your agent will let you know. Not necessarily your agent. Me, because I should be your agent. But anyway. So it's like it's usually like $500. But nowadays, the market is so competitive. People are putting $1,000, $2,000, dollars $5,000 just to get the deal. But... No one says you still can't put $500. So, I mean, I still write offers for with $500 as earnest money deposit. And I still get my offers accepted. So, um, so once you write your contract, pay your earnest money deposit, and accept your contract, most contracts are written with a home inspection contingency. And the home inspection contingency is, con excuse me, contingency is basically saying, hey, I want to buy your house. But first, I got to see, you know, what the condition is. That's what the contingency means. So, with today's market being competitive, hey, Catrice, with today's market being competitive, um, some people are not even putting inspection contingencies. Um, some people are paying twenty, thirty thousand 30000 more than what the house is worth because it's a housing shortage due to the pandemic. But... In a normal situation, the home inspection contingency is usually seven days, 10 days, sometimes 14 days. But usually if you put 14 days, sometimes they'll change it depending on the situation. So after you do the home inspection contingency and, you, and you know, if there's some repairs that need to be made, you can ask the seller to make whatever repairs. Uh, you have three days to negotiate that with the seller. Um, saying, hey, I want you to fix this. And the seller could be like, no, I don't want to fix that. And you got three days to go back and forth to confirm um, if it's going to be fixed. Most of the time, um, stuff gets fixed. Um, it's, all, it's all a negotiation. So it just depends. Sometimes they'll give a repair credit. They'll fix it. They'll give a home warranty. It just depends on the situation. So once you um, confirm about the inspection, 
Uh, once that's done, then they remove the inspection contingency and they'll send you a form to sign. Actually, the form that includes the list of repairs you want um, actually is the inspection contingency removal addendum. It's a long name, long name, but it's the form to take off that contingency. So then you're officially kind of um, tied into the deal after that. So then after you do that, you get with your lender and you, so, um, well, prior to you select the closing company. So then the closing company, um, not the closing company, the lender, you let them know all is good with the inspection. You're good to move forward with the loan or whatever. So then you do an appraisal. Um, so with an appraisal, so you have investor loans and you have regular loans. Um, regular loans. Most banks require an appraisal. An appraisal is to determine how much the house is worth to make sure that the bank isn't lending you more than the house is worth. So if you buy a house um, for 100000 and the appraisal comes in at one fifty, you're good. You just earned 50000 in equity. If it comes in under the appraisal, um, then you have to go back to the negotiation table um, and in most cases, they bring the price down or either, you know, if you want it that bad. No, sometimes the seller is like, no, I ain't bringing my price down. And if you want it that bad, you bring cash to make up the difference. But like I said, that's another time that you go back to negotiate the contract. So after you get squared away with the appraisal, um, the next step after that is um, you just wait for your closing company to do their thing. They do title searches. Um, they, you know, check tax records, ownership, prepare closing documents, all of that. Um, and then you close on your house. And although that sounds fast, it usually takes about, well, sometimes 30 days, but here lately it's been about 45 because um, interest rates are low. And with interest rates being low, you have a lot of people buying houses and you have a lot of people refinancing houses. So, but like if you bought, you know, if you selected a house today, you could be in your house within 30 to 45 days. So, but yeah, so that's that. I hope I wasn't talking too fast. Um, I was going to see if anybody had any questions. Uh, I don't have that many people up here, so... But yeah, so that was just information about the closing process. Um, most of the stuff that I just covered is for a general purchase. I guess I can cover some stuff for investing. So as an investor, um, some people use cash. Some people use hard money lenders. Uh, <laughs> you're funny, Lauren. So as an, um, with investing... Um, it's a little different. So with the lending, you use, some people use, like I said, they use cash. Um, they use lines of credit. They use hard money lenders. They use regular commercial banks. It just depends. Um, but the lending is all based on what they bring to the table. Um, I guess I could use an example for me. Um, when we buy our investment properties, we don't use our cash. Um, we use other people's money. Um, and with other people's money, um, sometimes we have to put money down. Um, so usually we use a lender where we have to put a percentage down. One moment. Okay, he must be winning Fortnite. But, um, okay, I see my message back. Um, but, yeah, so with the hard money lender, they have usually higher interest rates they have fees um and you have to put money down that all sounds bad but when it's time to file my taxes i need something to write off um to decrease the taxable income on my flip and those are things that i write off um on my taxes if i paid cash for the house i don't have nothing to write off because i used all my money to buy a house and then when i go to the irs they're going to want um, extra money on the the money I made on the flip. So I'm okay with them carrying expenses to flip a house. Uh, we actually just recently um, converted um, 
because I was networking with one of my builder friends and um, I know some people just use lines of credit. So the way a line of credit works is you get, um, and you can go to Indie Lender for this. With a line of credit, you can get huge hundreds of thousands of dollars of money to spend to flip houses, buy rentals, whatever. And with those lines of credit, you don't always have to go back and do a new loan every time. So with the line of credit, say I got approved for 500,000 for my line of credit, I can flip as many houses I want with that line of credit. Um, I don't have to keep going through the approval process and um, it's just a smoother process. So we've kind of converted over to that. Um, hey, Asha to see how that is. So um, so with a regular purchase, if I was an investor, um, of course, so I covered the lending, um, the earnest money deposit, depending on, um, usually like it's still the same. I know HUD and some other lenders, they require a percentage of the purchase price um, on uh, for the earnest money deposit. So that's just something that, you know, you, you know we'll discuss whenever you decide whatever property you want to buy. And then um, nowadays, we don't do an inspection contingency. We just buy the house. It need work anyway, so why not? I mean, I mean we, we're we at a point where when we go in, we can tell, okay, this need to be done, that need to be done. Um, and then most of our flips, we kind of have, um, we kind of have like a, a quality standard. So every house we flip, we'll get a new roof new HVAC, new windows, new electrical, new plumbing. And we do all that because most of the houses we flip are for, not necessarily specifically for first time home buyers, but they're pretty much for people who, you know, it's their first time buying. Um, they really can't get new construction. So they get close to new construction. And we just kind of, just to give them a, the assurance that, you know, their house is good and they have new stuff. So we do that. Um, and all of our flips. So with it, there's no need to inspect it. Like I said, there's really no need to inspect it because we're going to gut it and replace everything anyway. And we also don't do appraisals um, because who cares about the appraisal? It's a flip. Um, the appraisal and the flip is more important when it's time to um, sell the flip. And in that case, the buyer will pay for the appraisal. And then we close. Now with flips, you can close those in two weeks, 10 to 14 days. Um, Cause it's not a lot of underwriting. And if you, you know, if you're using your cash, it's not a lot of underwriting with the, actually no underwriting with the lender. If you use a hard money lender or um, some other kind of lender, it's not a long process because um, they don't have as big volume as the bigger lender. So you can close faster on investment properties. So yeah, so that's the process to buy a house. Um, if you are interested in buying, getting started with the process this year, in the future, you know somebody, um, send them my way. I'm welcome to help and share information. If you know me, like you, like like most of you probably do know me, you know I don't mind sharing resources and information at no cost. Because I'm all about helping people. I want to see people thrive and grow and do good. So if you have questions, um, you can IM me, um, post on the live, post on my Facebook, whatever. Um, contact me and then I can help you and answer any questions you may have. Well, I don't I do not do credit repair. I will say that. But I will say um, my lender that lenders that I work with, they will... Um, run your credit, and if you're not where you need to be, they will give you step-by-step step on what to do to get you where you need to be. So there's no need to go pay for credit repair because lenders are really offering that kind of at no cost now just to kind of get you going so you can eventually buy a house. And it's up to you to follow those instructions that they give you. So, yep. So, yeah. So that, this um wraps up. Oh, I ain't even drank my tea, y'all. Here's my tea. It's green tea, so. But yeah, so this is, you know, thank y'all for joining me on my first, I guess, episode of Real Tea Tuesdays. Um, I try to be consistent and do Tuesdays at 7. 
for about 30 minutes and I try to cover different topics each time. Next Tuesday, I'm going to try to get um, one of my CPA friends to go live with me so they can go over um, different things um, you can do for your taxes so that you can uh, be ready to buy because um, taxes make a big difference. Um, it's a big difference. I'm not going to go into that, to that now. We'll cover that next week. And I wish you all, I know it's only... Um, Hold up. Is today Tuesday? Let me find out. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was Monday. I don't know. Either way, it's Tuesday. So I'll see y'all next Tuesday. Y'all have a good rest of the week. Be safe. Try to stay germ free. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, you can call me or text me. Um, y'all have a good evening. Thanks for joining me. Bye.